Okay, so what we got here is the latest version of the PyPot prototype, which is a simulator uh, to simulate the PyPot when it's actually written, so I can write a lot of the code for him on a computer before building the robot. So if I run it, so we've got a little robot here, which I can navigate around. Up here we've got uh, the left eyes view, coming out of the left camera, the right eyes view, and just a little front view so you can see him moving around. Um, let's zoom out a bit. Right, so the principle behind this is I've got a plugin running in Unity, as you can see up here. This plugin basically takes values from the uh, simulation and allows other programs to request them across the network. And conversely, it allows programs on the network to poke values into the server, which Unity gets to control the robot. Um, so if I take my Python script here, oops, and run it, what we can see in Unity is it's now got an accepted connection. And I can start typing things in here. Control the robot. If I start by moving the servos that control the bits of the robot, we can control his eyes individually. It's setting the eye servos 0 and 1 to 45 degrees. Set them both back to zero. Servo 2 will control his uh, neck moving up and down. Set to minus 30 degrees, so look downwards. 30 degrees, so look upwards. Back to zero, look forwards. And then we've got servo 3 which controls his neck rotation left and right, so we can look to the side. And to the other side. And back to the middle. Then in addition to uh, servos, we've got motors for the left and right wheels. Which we can move forwards and backwards. And if I set them both to the same speed, Pivot will move it in a straight line. So turn to turn around. And once he's finished looking around, we'll bring him back towards us. And stop him. Let's just fly in for a closer look. Fiddle with those eyes a little bit. Uh, make him go cross-eyed. And the last thing I've also got, which isn't very obvious, but he's also got um, these sensors on each side of his body and one on the bottom as well, which will be infrared rangefinders. And we can query the value of those sensors by saying get sensor 0, get sensor 1, get sensor 2, get sensor 3, get sensor 4, and sensor 4 is the bottom one, which is why it's very low. What we'll also be able to do is record the I values from Python, but I've not hooked that up yet. And that is where we are so far.